when we compare ozone with HDFS, we can find two major differences. One is that ozone can scale significant better, it can handle billions of objects. And the other one, that ozone can be used not only for from from Hadoop compatible file system or from HBase or Hive, but it can be used from any S3 compatible tools, TensorFlow, machine learning, or, or from anything else. So this is my typical last slide, which shows the possibilities that it's not only Hadoop compatible file system, but AWS or compatible or S3 compatible clients, libraries, and there are a uh, third options to use it a uh, uh, CSI uh, implementation, but it uh, will be explained in a uh, next video. So let's start about the S3 first, and because this is a big topic, let's focus the most important five aspect of the S3 compatible interface. So, first of all, this is the write path we already discussed, that how does it work. The client connects to the Ozone Manager, which connects to the Storage Container Manager. These are the leader nodes, and the data is written to or read from the data node, the leader of the data node actually, and the data is replicated. And with S3 compatible uh, library or client, this is almost the same, that the only difference is that we have an S3 compatible REST gateway here. This is the S3 gateway. This is a separated component which should be started. So there was a question on the mailing list that, oh, I started also manager and I couldn't use it from as S3 backend. Yes, because we need a separated component and it's very important that it's totally stateless. So it's very easy to scale and you can just start multiple instances or use any specific load balancing between the multiple interfaces. So let's check it. How does it work? I just started a, an Ozone server here with the help of Docker Compose. You can see that the S3 gateway is included, so it's already started, and I scaled up to have at least three data nodes. So everything is up and running. And now, because it's an unsecured cluster, I can just use it. The only important thing is that I need to change the endpoint. This AWS is a official AWS uh, Let's get S3 API endpoint. So this is an official AWS client, and this 1979 is the default port. You can see here that this is exposed from the from the containers. And let's just start with creating bucket. Bucket one. Ah, bucket. Bucket one. Okay, and it's created. You can see this location bucket one. That was the first thing. This is a stateless additional service. Okay, the next second question. So in Ozone, we have volumes, which is an additional uh, level in the hierarchy. Uh, if we check it here, these are the volumes. And inside the volumes, we have buckets which can contain multiple keys. And it's very important that to map it to, with the, to the S3 word, where there is only buckets, Ozone expose by default the S3V volume. So this is one specific volume which contains all of the S3 specific buckets of all of the buckets inside this volume are visible via the S3 interface which means that if I created this bucket, it's supposed to be visible in this S3 volume. So first of all, let's try to upload something here just to be sure that we are checking the same bucket. And so I'm using the bucket one and Actually, I would like to upload the README 
to bucket one slash key one. Okay, obvious SC. Oh, a, a copy is missing from here, I guess. Okay, so it's uploaded. And now I can go to the um, SCM, the Pleader server, and check what is here. So first of for example, I can do an Ozone SAH key list, and I would like to check the S3 volume and the bucket one in the S3 volume, and it's supposed to have this key one, which is just uploaded. If you would like to use HBase or Hive or anything which is compatible with the Hadoop compatible file system, you can do the same. Ozone, for example, with O3FS, where it's supposed to be the bucket one s3 one slash something like this. Yes, and I have the key one. Actually, when we created the bucket one, you can see that this is a web browser link. And because the S3 compatible interface, this is just a REST endpoint. So you can try to, to load it in a, or check it from a browser. So this is the endpoint of the S3 gateway. So there is some hint here. How can you use it? And if I check the bucket, because this is an unsecured cluster, there is no authentication, so I can just see the content. But if I put this secret browser true, which is not part of the uh, AWS standard, but it's a uh, it's an internal browser which can help us to see what is here. So this is the key one which is just uploaded and I can download it from here. So this was the there is one oh there are two remaining. So this is the third one that we have a browser. The there is a still there is a problem. So what about if I have an other volume, what I would like to expose somehow with S3 compatible via the S3 compatible interface. So let's say I have a volume one and bucket X, and I would like to see it from the from the S3 gateway. So by default, as I explained, that the S3V volume is exposed. But the easiest way is to expose any other buckets, is just to create some kind of symlinks. So there is a command which can create a symlink here, which means that if you, you will see this bucket X inside the S3V, but if you would like to check the content, the content of the real bucket will be shown. So that's the easiest way to expose any other buckets from any other volumes. And the way how can you use it is that there is an Ozon SH bucket command and you can see that there is a link here. So let's say I'm creating this Ozon SH volume create wall one. So this is a different volume. This is not exposed by default. I can create an ozone sh bucket create wall one wall one bucket x. So I have the bucket x and I can uh, mount it. So I can say that ozone sh bucket mount oh as an sh bucket link oh i used the wrong subcommand so you can say that i have a source the bucket which the link should point to so the link should point to the wall one bucket x and it should be linked to the s3v bucket x okay and with this approach now i have a bucket x under the the 
SRV volume, which can be used as before, but under the hood. It's stored under a, a different uh, volume, SH bucket list. So it's very important that we have this. You can see that under the SRV, I ha can see the bucket 1 and the bucket X. So from now, this is, this is like a standard S3 compatible bucket, just because we did this mounting. You can see that the source volume source bucket is, is filled. Okay, that was the number four, that we have these kind of links, which can help us to expose any of the buckets. And the last one is that, until now, I just cheated here, because there was no security. If the security is not turned on in an ozone cluster, you can use any kind of AWS secret ID and AWS um, secret key. So let's start a secure cluster. I'm just uh, stopping this cluster and go to the ozone secure example. Docker compose up. And I have a few secure cluster. You can see that I have some Kerberos and KMS server. And let's go to the SCM again. And there is an ozone S3 command. And with the get secret, you can check your secret. Well, the question is that what is, oh, it's not yet started, I guess. Okay, it's started. So yeah. What is the secret for you? If this is a secure cluster, you need an identity. So you can use your standard Kerberos identity. I have one here, uh, key tabs test user, where I have the test user hostname. Hmm, what? I have an extension. Okay, so I identified myself as the test user. So I can just try to check the get secret again. And yes, no, I have the AWS access key and AWS secret. And in a secure cluster, I should use this one. And my identity will be exactly the same as when I use the Kerberos key tab or credential to do anything from the Hadoop compatible file system. So I think we had the five things. I, I, this is the stateless service. You should start it and you have a separated port. The buckets are stored in a specific volume, but you can use this linking and you can link one bucket to an other volume to make it available for the S3 users. There is the secret internal browser which can be used to check, to double check if it's, it's the same bucket or what is the content. And the credentials can be obtained with this ozone S3 get secret command after doing some K in it. Okay, again, the last slide. So we check the first item from here and these are the very basics of the S3 compatible gateway of Apache Hadoop Ozone.